Hit your mic. It's a cool slide. <laughs> We can't hear you. Hi guys. Can you see the main screen and not the other one with all the notes and that? Yep, looks perfect. Hey, how do you embed videos uh, in a, did, did you make this with Markdown the slides? No, no, I made these on PowerPoint. This is just, uh, okay. just a GIF, um, but obviously I've read the chapter and I kind of felt like the chapter was like before and it's kind of like understanding what's going on behind the scenes, really. Um, and then that understanding will then help you in the future um, kind of understand new functions and make the right decisions with what kind of code you're going to write. So that's why I've kind of rebranded names and values as behind the scenes in R. Um, and there you can see there he is with a GIF. So within this chapter, names and values, um, there's kind of, I'd say there's four, five main things. The first thing is knowing what single binding is, shared binding, then copy to, and then place copying. Um, and then within all of that, it's looking at how doing all of these different actions changes the main route or kind of like the, the, the address. Um, I mean, what Hadley Wickham has used is these kind of unique identifiers um, and he's used something that looks similar to the way that the address is shown within R. Um, but obviously, it's a lot smaller. So the first one is um, binding basics and how to distinguish between a name and a value in R. Now, I think as personally me myself does this, um, I kind of look at this as an object named X. Um, but what they're trying to say here is that actually you shouldn't look at it like that. And you should look at it as you've got an object, which is an, a list of named vectors, which is in a named and kind of a named part. So instead of looking at it as an object that's created, you're looking at it as that 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 name has been put to the object not the object has been put to the name. And they refer to this as like a single binding. Um, and then the next part is a shared binding. So we can see here from the fact that they've assigned X to Y um, here, X to Y. And here, this X and this Y are sharing the same named vectors. So one, two, three. And you can see that that has been represented by having this zero times 74b and that is the same on both of those um, named vectors. Now the reason that they kind of want you to look at it like this is because when we just consider it as a list of vectors, a, an object that has been signed, assigned a list of vectors, we're looking at it too simply. But obviously when you first start out in R, it's kind of reasonable to explain it like that before kind of going into this, which I guess this is why this book is called Advanced Art. Then you can also see that the arrow here, this part here, this arrow here is different to this arrow here. And that's because it's creating a binding to the name. Um, so there's quite a lot of little different things going on. And then again, like we said earlier, the unique identifier is similar to the object's memory address. So um, now the way we kind of can identify this object um, identifier is using a piece of code which is called lobstring, um, which is the lobster package that Ed was mentioned about previously. Um, and then that will tell you the exact point of where that X or Y object is located. Now, in this case, if we run that code as the X and the Y, I think I have got this up in my R script. So let me just have it. Let me just see if I have got it up. <laughs> so, for example, sorry, I did get it up. Um, here, we're, we're, we've got an object, which is a list of named vectors, which we have then named X with bound that to X. So we're referring it as binding it to the X. That's been put in here. 
as a data object. Then we've run this function here, which created a new Y object. Now here, what, what this is kind of in a nutshell, which should show um, is that these will have the exact same address. So here is the address of X. Could not find object address, so I've not got my packages installed. So I just need to install my packages. Bear with. I just dropped the um, code if you do need to install it. Yeah. It's in the chat if you need it. <clears throat> you need to install uh, because they he gave a GitHub address. You need to use the install install underscore git. And to use that, you need to load up the library dev tools. And if you don't have dev tools installed, you'll need to install dev tools. Simple. <laughs> Try it. Oh, hmm. What's going on there? Did you load up dev tools? I can. Oh, you have you have it. Okay, it's loaded. Oh, let's see. Scroll up and let's see that the thing because it this works for me, no problem. Oh, R tools. R tools. <clears throat> okay, so you need Dev tools and R R tools. Big R, little T. Oh dear. <laughs> what version of R do you have? Let's see. I'm pretty sure I have the latest one. Okay. Uh, for Let's see here. Yeah, you're using the newest version of R Studio. Oh, that's R Studio though. Type version in your console and hit enter. Oh, you've got a pretty you've got the same version as me. Hmm. Let's see here. Actually you have a newer version of R than me. Um, that code worked for me. I know I do have our tools installed. Um, <clears throat> it, it, did, what did you go through this on a different computer and now? And now no, I've made loads of notes on it, but I got my scripts ready last minute. So I was reading it and making the PowerPoint slides, but I didn't. And I got the script ready and did the quiz template. I got you. Well, maybe I can. Um, Maybe I can uh, be your your um, script runner if you want. I mean, I can show it from the book because it literally is just showing this part here, which is what I was trying to show oh. is that even though that this here is we've assigned, we've created a new object Y with X, and then we're just showing that they've got the same unique identifier. And then here using the love string package, and using the function object underscore ADDR, it tells us that the object X is in the exact same location as object Y. So that's what I was trying to show. <laughs> so hopefully everyone kind of understands that. So I shall move on. Do you reckon that's all right, Ed, if I move on? Yeah, let's just move on. And, and then the next slide is using copy on modify so here we're saying that the initial object that we created so not shared binding we are then creating a new object 
Um, and you can see here that the unique identifier is now different. So zero times 74B, zero times CD2. So it's changed. And this is where we've, co we've copied and, and changed that binding kind of relationship. Then here they introduce a new kind of idea. So when you're changing things, you can then trace the changes that you've made within the single object. So you can see how X has gone to Y and so on. Um, the actual function for that is traceman, open bracket, and then once you've no longer want to trace that particular object and the changes that you're making within that object, you then just do untraceman, which is new, new kind of um, assign, new kind of functions. Then with the copy on modify, where we're saying that we can then make a change and it'll create a new object. There's two rules where this does not apply. And we saw the first one in the first slide. And this is where it's called modify in place. So I copied this from the first slide again here. And this is one of the times where it's now called modify in place and not copy on modify. And that's when we're dealing with objects with a single binding, which was the first example that we used. Um, and what we're doing is we're changing this named vector here, three, we're replacing it with four. So instead of creating two objects where we've got a V, one, two, three, and a V, one, two, four, we have now just got one object. Now, these are not sharing those named vectors, whereas the example here, they were sharing that same named vectors. OK, so that was shared binding here is single binding and where it's been kind of totally replaced, which is modify in place. So there's been modified. A modification has been made on that named vector. Then the other example, which is a lot more complicated, um, well, it looks more complicated, but I guess when you're using it, it doesn't seem that complicated, but it's with environment. So here they've actually kind of created a. Um, they've created. A data frame where you've got ABC as the column, one column and one, two, three as another column. And then what they've done is they have introduced a new kind of binding by introducing the four and they've now assigned that to the C. So instead of having th three, the C pointing to the three, now the C points to the four. And this is just a visualization of how to show it. So that means that here, this data frame technically no longer exists, but this one does exist and this one here exists. So that's kind of like a really brief overview I kind of didn't want to write too much on it because I wanted to use the visualizations. Um, but I think that the next step is for us all to kind of have a go at the quiz questions. Um, and I've created a kind of. In here, I've put it in there, I've put it in the chat just further up here. I've created a quiz template that we can all go through on our own and then discuss together. Um, it does explain the questions in there and then have a go at that and then we'll come back and then talk about the solutions for it. <laughs> Is there anything you want to add, add Ed? No, that sounds good. I think um, it's quite a wordy topic, like there's a lot. Yeah. Of <laughs> It's very conceptual. I, I think if um, <clears throat> if you didn't have a chance to look at the chapter beforehand, then uh, well, let's have a look at the uh, maybe. Could you load up the? Oh, you have the template loaded. So um, so what we're going to do is just run through your template. It's and you've got comments. So yeah, let's just take ten minutes and and work through it. If anybody has any any questions or uh, wants to comment something, um, just unmute and yell. I'm going to run through it myself too. OK, so I'll give everyone until 40 minutes past and then I'll come I'll come back.
These are fun. I actually haven't done them myself either. <laughs> they are tricky, though. I think they're pretty hard. <laughs> See, if you haven't read the chapter, I think they're very hard. And even if you have, I think they're still, you have to think about it. <clears throat> Your mic's off if you're talking, George. <laughs> All the time. Um, I think with the first one, you kind of got to think of it as if it's not column one, two, three. And if you had columns called, I don't know, chicken, cow, duck, and you wanted to add another co column called pig, how would you do it, considering it's a data frame? I'm still struggling with installing our tools. It's not, it's not having it. How's everyone getting on? Good 
it may be that <clears throat> people need to refer to the chapter and um, I think if you start talking us through the solutions in like three minutes, um, we can do it. I, I think these are pretty tricky for your average R user. <clears throat> but I think maybe just a few more minutes and then people can look up in the books uh, in the book and try to find the solutions. Be good to know if anyone else is having problems like installing, being able to actually use the lobster package. Have you um, have you solved that, George? No, I'm still I'm still on it. Still on it. Will you will you share your screen and let me see what you're doing? I'll try to help you solve that. I'll give another minute here. They are tricky, Eric. Uh, <laughs> they they are tricky. It's a good thing. All right. So uh, uh, let me see. Hold on a moment. I changed the URL because initially I actually clicked on the URL that you put here and it said page can't be found. It took me to a 404. So I thought maybe that could be it. Oh, it's because it's uh, spelled with a, your operating system or something has got, uh, if you go back to that URL, you'll see there's a percent %27 at the end of the URL. Didn't copy it over correctly. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. And it's got the thing. But uh, let's see. Install our tools. There was this thing for like, don't check the update. So, like, don't check for an update for it to tell you that it's not a compatible version and just try it. Ah, here, here we go. Do you um, do you want to try something like this? Hold on. You may need to in install this function. Oops, it's a weird syntax. I wonder if it could be do, to do with my Java version. Uh, maybe. Try try to run those lines one at a time. I just put them in the in the chat. Just run them one at a time and see if you can first install install R, and then you load the library. Oops, get the I. There you go. <clears throat> Hold on, just let it go. There you go. Okay, and now I'll try that line 27. Boom. <clears throat> nice. So if anybody else is having a problem, do that part first. <laughs> <clears throat> now you should be able to delete um, 29, 30, 31, Let it let it install. It's still going. Just go next. Yep, yeah. all the defaults. <clears throat> I 
Let's see what Prismix got here. Data frame, okay. Names, okay. DF data frame. Now it. <clears throat> okay. I think you clap. I think you, I've got to run it to see. So you've made a new data frame. Okay, that's a that's a clever workaround. Well, you have the right thing here with referring to these because these are called non syntactic Synth, how do you say it? Syntactic. Non syntactic. So mm -hmm. by putting them in the backward thing, is you make it syntactic. And yes, this is why the backticks are there. But and then I force again, then against force the same names, but just for three columns one, two, and three. But I don't know if it was, if it's the thing you thought about. Yeah, do, you, do you have a, a different solution, George? Or so I can show a different solution. Yeah, I, I did it like this. I just assigned it into the, like you know you would with the norm, like just a normal data frame when you're adding a column. Yeah. I can show the solution that I had is, uh, I'll just take the screen for just a moment. So the solution that um, that I had was um, <clears throat> yeah like uh, like this. Whoops, I put this code there. I'll put it up there. Um, the solution that I had was like this. Um, I made the data frame, and I, I think for these little problems, in fact, for this whole book, it'll help to do. Probably people are doing this, but for me, I, I want to see. Okay, well, oops. I'll run this, do this one at a time. So let's make the data frame that Hadley wants. And now we've got some crazy names with uh, the things that we've just plopped in there. Then he's changed the names to numbers. Boom, so now let's have a look at our data frame. Now we've got a data frame object here. The way that I did it was fairly programmatic. So I used the apply function to take the original data frame because he specified um, you specified uh, only to use the dollar sign. So the way that George did it is, is just right. And the kind of the moral here, I think the lesson being taught is about naming some special naming conventions. You can, uh, and I encounter this about eh, a couple times a month when people send me, you know, like filthy Excel files that aren't really tidy and the, the names are kind of weird. Sometimes I change them and sometimes I don't, depending on how much time I have and whatever. But this is the moral here that you can have any name you want. But the, one of the basic naming conventions of R is that you can't have data objects in the global environment that start with um, a number unless it's a, it's a character string forced. Um, so I used apply to um, do it very programmatically on the margin, the row, and summed it up. OK, back to George. Well, Ed, I think you're going to have to do the next one because I need I need the, the lobster string package. Ah, OK, no problem. <laughs> but <clears throat> I believe it, it's it's using the functions that were in the chapter. Yeah, to no problem. The, the size. Yeah, no problem. Uh, let me clear my thing, so I like to do that. Yeah, so for this one, in the following code, how much memory does Y occupy? Well, um, the the thing with this is, so let's make the thing, and um, that's just a thousand uh, um, or a million values, rather, of stuff, a hundred thousand values of stuff. So that puts something in X, and then we make a list of three Xs. So it's just going to triple the size, the memory footprint of that. Um, oh, why did I mutate this down here? So I, I used, I can't remember what he did in the um, in the chapter, but I used my old go-to object dot size. Is that what he used in the chapter? Um, he used obj dot size. Okay, let's try that. Is that in Lobster? So yes. I get an object dot size. Let's see where object dot size lives. It's it's just one of the base R packages. Let's see. OBJ dot size. 
It does actually make reference to the old way of doing it. Oh. Uh, doesn't like the old way. No. I don't think he does. All these young fellers, they don't like the new way. They don't want, want to go with their new ways. I'm trying to find it where he makes reference to it. Okay. So is this in, uh, let's see where that is. Boom. Is it in, in Lobster? Space. What am I doing wrong? Cheap lobster. No. What is the uh, package that it's in? I it was lobster. Is this what it's like? OBJ size. OBJ underscore size. Ah. Oh, sorry. I'm. I'm not looking. I'm. I'm looking at the book. So it is in lobster. So. So what happens when I do it with object dot size? Is I get the uh, size of the object in bytes? Yeah. Size of the object in bytes. Yeah. And uh, when I do it with the lobster one, let's see what we get. Oh, we get it uh, with commas. Yeah, which is showing. And then there's okay. the other one, which is the address. Yeah. OK. So the other one is the address one, which is I uh, can't remember. It's the trace mem. So trace mem is is the um, tracing the changes within the copy. So like the changes in the address. But to get the actual initial address, it's just um, object address. Obj un obj underscore a double d r. Gotcha. Okay. I have like a summary slide, actually. But, the, but this is like this is like digressing from the question. I I merely answered the question. <laughs> object that size for y? No, it should be. It should be uh, three times the size of. Uh, our x because it's just a list of the three x's um and when we get that oops i haven't made it yet there we go object size for y should be 24 megs three two one boom there we go and we can use the fancy way as well copy with lobster that'll just give us the commas of course let me point out to you folks that oops what did i do here X, boom, Y, boom. Ah, now this is something different. The, the, this is interesting. When I do my object size Y, it gives me a list of uh, 24 megs. And if we look up in the global environment, it's three elements with 24 megs. But if I look at the lobster object size Y, ah, look at that. It's exactly the same size as, um, as X. And let me just prove that to myself and to you, line 31, 3, 2, 1. And what it's doing is it's um, it's uh, this function in Lobster acknowledges the fact that, um, that uh, it's the same object that's merely listed three times without taking up new memory. And it's just using the list object. It's just a list of the same pointer three times rather than literally three, three times the space. And that's the difference between the new way and the old way, I suppose. OK, very interesting. I mean, this stuff is um, trivial with toy um, experiments. Data frames do, yeah, they're they're an object of themselves. But lists are a bit different. Um, OK, and on which line does the and I've already given the answer here. Let me just take that away. <laughs> <laughs> on which line does it make? So we're we're making we're making our object. This this George showed this nicely in her slides. So now we've got this at a memory address um, here, and here we're assigning a new memory address. Um, I mean, not a new memory address, a new name to the same memory address with B. But one of the lessons in the chapter was if we index the first element of B, it'll be one, right? Boom, because it's just this value right here. So th this is actually, this structure right here is actually a namespace pointing. That we, they don't use the pointer word, the P word. Hadley Wickham doesn't use it in here because the R people, you know, avoid it, but this is, you know, 
labeling that memory address or in other words pointing to it <clears throat> and uh, if we take that address if we take that um, address and we reassign a new value this makes you think about the vector syntax for reassigning vector locations Th this is the step where the original um, vector gets copied and uh, updated to a new object unto itself three two one there so it's it's actually copied on only on this third line there are no changes whatsoever on the first two lines that was fun i think these are pretty tricky uh the thing that makes computer programming hard it's the same thing with statistics as a matter of fact too is um it doesn't matter how clever you are it's it's vicious that way it brings it brings the mighty uh the mighty professors and the mighty postdocs to their knees because um it doesn't matter how smart they are or how big their grants are unless you have the experience of figuring out these problems you, you have to have the training to learn how it works and be shown how somebody else designed it to work i think that's something we can get from this book um that was good, George. Thank you. Do you have any final remarks before we wrap it up? No, just thank you for you guys kind of getting involved in it because it's it is a really conceptual topic. So it's hard to kind of explain. And I feel like it kind of goes back, makes you go backwards and reroute in the way that you think about art. But yeah, thank you. I hope it was OK. I'm looking forward to doing the chapter three. That yeah, was good. Thank you. Let's give it another chance. This, I think, at least for the few, the people who came, I don't know if the topic prevented people from coming. It might be what they think, but I think this worked pretty well. It's exactly what I thought it was. I think it's a lot of fun. I need to force myself to allow more time for people to do some coding and problem solving. Sometimes it's um, it takes time to plan 